All right, this is Jeff Ray, the prototographer for Steeped in Light Photography. This is part two of my video series on the modification of the TechArt Pro adapter series to convert it as a standard adapter into one that allows us to use it with additional lens types and use it in a way that uh, actually is more useful uh, for some of the specialty lenses that were never envisioned to have been used in this fashion. And it allows us to use uh, some of the specialty lenses that are either hyperprime or are of the older uh, alpha mount design here in a fully autofocus way. So let's get right into it. If you haven't yet watched the first video in this uh, in this series on this, please go back and watch that. It's about five and a half minutes long, uh, and it will go into a little bit of what I've been able to do with that modified adapter. But right now I wanna focus on the, on the adaptation itself and actually on the adaptation of the adapter. I wanna talk a little bit about the modifications I've made. If you have any questions at the end, please feel free to leave these in the comment section down below. And I look forward to reading those comments as well. And I'll also include some sample images uh, at the end of one of these two videos and perhaps both that will give you an idea of the kinds of images you can capture using uh, this lens combination. So let's get right into it. As you might be aware, the TechArt Pro Adapter from the same company of the same name, it's an eponymous name, um, is actually a very, very useful adapter. It's designed to be relatively sealed against uh, elements out in the environment. Uh, it's very, very well constructed and it does a beautiful job. It communicates with the Sony E-mount body system through the pins on the back, and rather than sending that signal as many adapters do to an autofocus lens uh, via a pin arrangement on the front, this uses an articulating ring that actually uh, moves in and out four and one half millimeters, almost five millimeters in fact in some of these, and allows us to mount a Leica M mount or by use of an intermediate adapter, it allows us to use other mounts like Pentax and uh, for instance, some of the Canon mounts and so forth, and allows this adapter to then uh, use a manual focus lens that's non-native as an autofocus lens on a Sony utilizing the PDAF focusing system or phase detection autofocus. Um, that's especially exciting on some of the higher resolution cameras like the A7R2, but I've also used it quite successfully on the 6500 that I have as well as the A6300, all of which support the PDAF focusing system. I will mention parenthetically here that the TechArt Pro adapter, the only body that it is not supported on currently that's still in Sony's lineup uh, as a current model is the A6000 in the E-mount series. Uh, it is a crop sensor body. It's a phenomenal entry level body, but it uses only CDAF or contrast detection as opposed to phase detection. So it will not work with this adapter natively. Some people have claimed some mixed success with that. Um, I've tried it and the best success I can tell you is it's not really impressive. So uh, really do try to work with either the 6300, 6500, the A7 series, and of course the new R3 should work well with this. I'm really excited about getting my hands on one here in the next few weeks when these become available and being the first to test out this adapter to to show you guys a little bit of what's capable of being done. This is the stock adapter. The stock adapter has the pins down here and has a plastic uh, section up above. It's actually contained within a plastic molded plastic system that contains these and then has about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters of clearance above it. Above the area, you also have another support ring on the back that is a matte finish as well to prevent reflections. And these two give this enough of its strength to be able to handle heavier lenses without in any way uh, deforming or having any kind of a specific wobble. Now there is a wobble that's associated, some folks have reported, with this front ring loosening. And I'll discuss that in a future video, but I've not experienced that myself with lenses that I've properly cradled in my hand, uh, the longer, heavier lenses, while I'm using that A7 R2 or 6500 body that I prefer with this adapter. So this is a stock adapter. It works really well when you use it with something like a stock uh, a, a Leica mount lens, like the Voigtlander, which I happen to really like. This Nocton 35 millimeter is a phenomenal lens and it mounts beautifully onto a standard adapter. And you'll see you have plenty of clearance there between the back surface of the lens and the supports on the top and bottom. But what if you want to use some of those lenses out there that are not quite so lucky in that regard? For instance, if we were to go to the hyperprime lens here from SLR Magic, which is phenomenal, and if you'll compare these two, you will see, and I'll rotate this around so it's a little easier to see there, you will see that the mount is a bit deeper, particularly if I bring it all the way to infinite focus. At infinite focus, you can see how that lens actually protrudes out beyond the back of the actual M mount uh, barrel. As a result, this would normally ground out or basically bump up against, if you will, the back support on an unmodified unit. 
So if we look at one that's unmodified as an example, and we attempt to mount this lens, and I will tell you right now, SLR Magic will tell you in their documentation, you can't do that. It will not work. This is really an M mount designed for their convenience to then put on an intermediate adapter to finally adapt this to being an E mount lens or uh, an, a, a Micro Four Thirds or one of the other styles that they support. There's three different adapters currently available that then mount to this that allow this to then mount to those bodies. However, what I've been working on myself is to try to make it adaptable to a standard uh, TechArt Pro because that would be really exciting to be able to do that. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to work. And why won't it work? Because you can see right here that that barrel, when it's in the infinite focus position, when it's set for its furthest distance, it grounds out. It bumps into these top and bottom, and it also tends to bottom out against the front bezel right here, against this front section right here, which means you can't use it. Well, never say never. What I have done, and I'll show it to you very briefly here, and then I want to go through the mods on this, is to have modified that adapter, and this is the modified version of it right here, and you will notice that it will mount quite nicely, which I could not do before, and it will allow me to focus it, and I'm going to hope you can see this on the video. Yeah, you sure can. You can see that moving in and out. You can see that uh, actually moving back and forth there. You'll note that I'll be able to move it all the way to its fully infinite position and then move it back. And as I showed in my previous video, it focuses beautifully. It really does. And so this makes a really nice combination for low light conditions when you're doing video or for that matter, still photography uh, with a limited amount of natural light you might have available to you. And it allows us to use it in an autofocus fashion so that we don't have to worry about whether we're off a little bit with particularly that very shallow depth of focus you're going to get on this uh, at night. So as a result, I love having this adapter. Okay, good enough of the sales pitch. Let's go into a little bit about how I did this, okay? And really, this, again, is, falls into the, into the realm of some of the other modifications I've made, uh, and hence the name Prototographer, in that many of these, and this one's included, are mechanical modifications only, not electronic. So you don't have to be afraid of doing this, that you're somehow going to, you know, in some way, uh, short out some critical circuit board, or in some way uh, have to learn soldering as a technique if you're not familiar with it, or purchase a wave soldering equipment, that kind of thing. I will show mods later to some other equipment I have that do require electronic modification. But for the purpose of this video uh, and for the function of modifying this adapter, you simply don't need it. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is taking something, and I use a manual file. You can use a Dremel for this process, but I highly recommend you use something manual so that you can very carefully control the degree of, of metal that you're going to have to remove in plastic in order to perform this mod. I'm also going to preface this by saying, this will void your warranty. Let me say that again. This will void your your TechArt Pro warranty. I want to be very clear about that. I am not advocating that anyone else do this. I am simply showing you what I've done so that if you choose to do this for yourself, uh, you can take care of this and do so quite easily. It'll require a little elbow grease and probably about a, set aside about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes worth of time to do the modification. Uh, if you're comfortable around doing this kind of thing, working with small parts, if not, allow yourself maybe a couple of hours to do it. But essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to Take off as much of the material above these pins as you can without, and this is critical, without removing all of the plastic above the pin in this area here. The reason you can't get to it down here is it's obviously part of the permanent mount, but you don't want to cut so far that these spring-loaded pins either pop out or deflect left and right or up and down. You want to keep those pins in a perfect configuration they are right here, but you do want to remove about a millimeter and a half of material all the way across on this. The only other modification you're going to make to the back side is going to be to do the same to the metallic area right up here. And I'm going to show you the unmodified version so you can see how much I've removed there. And you'll see that on the top I've removed approximately two and a half millimeters. And I think you can see that pretty clearly right there. I'm going to try and hold that a little closer so you can kind of get that. There we go. And you can see how much I've removed there as well. Um, but you're going to want to remove approximately two to two and a half millimeters across the top and approximately a millimeter and a half across the bottom. That will allow any barrel that I've run across to clear those, room, those, uh, those uh, support posts on the back and still keep this a rigid adapter. The only other modification, and this one's gonna require a little more time, and that's the reason why I want you to set aside some time for this, is the modification you're gonna make down here to this section. And by that, what I mean is, there is four and a half millimeters of material along this bottom case housing that has to be removed in order for it to clear some of the larger lenses that are going to be available uh, with some of these hyper primes and also some of the alpha mount lenses that normally would not adapt. So what you're going to have to do, and you can actually see that adaption, uh, that adaptation, I should say, right here as well. But what you're going to basically need to do on this is to disassemble the unit in an area that's clean and free of dust by removing the two screws that are located here and here. 
This is the only two sets of screws you have to worry about. There are no other screws on the exterior that have to be removed, so it's very simple. And these are very small Phillips head screws. Uh, you can use a very small, I used a two millimeter Phillips head uh, unit to work with this. Uh, optical screwdriver that's got a Phillips head unit on it should work as well for that purpose. But be sure you get a good secure fit onto the screw head and that you don't feel it slipping uh, because you don't want to foul that head. If you try to insert a screwdriver in here that doesn't make a good fit with that head and you mess up the head, you're going to have a hard time either disassembling it or worse yet, reassembling the unit. So be sure you get a good snug fit on the head and you'll be able to feel that if you've ever removed a Phillips head screw before, you'll know when you've made good contact with that full, uh, fully with that head so that you don't actually strip it out. Once you've made contact, removed it. These are going to be two screws and I'll remove those in a little bit and show that in a second video. But I want to uh, just go through this briefly with you. You'll remove these two screws and then very, very carefully, this seam right here that you can see, and let me show it to you on the unmodified unit as well. You can see where on the front of these, there is a seam between this top bezel cover and the rear section of the motor housing here, right along here, you can insert a very thin flat blade screwdriver. Again, I use an optical screwdriver for this purpose and it will pop off. Once it's popped off, and the reason that you're popping it off is because you're going to be filing away a fair amount of metal. When you do that, you don't want the metal getting down in the gearing system down below here that does the magic for you. Uh, in fact, you'll be able to see if I hold it to angle right here, some of the actual marks, the tool marks, you can see where I've actually done some of the filing right here. Now, when I'm through filing this, in order to retain that nice black finish, I've used something really fancy for that, a basically Sharpie marker. <laughs> so it's very, very simple. A black Sharpie marker will very nicely uh, retint re -tint this to a nice dark black color. And I've had no difficulty doing that top and bottom. I've had no difficulty doing that and uh, having any problems with internal reflections whatsoever. And I'm talking about in fairly demanding light conditions like you would find uh, during the magic hour where the sun is very low on the horizon and you're shooting into quite a bit of light perhaps. So the bottom line there is uh, you're going to want to remove about a millimeter and a half down here, about two and a half millimeters up above, and then you're going to want to remove about four and a half millimeters here. Now the way I'm able to determine that before I do my work is I use another Sharpie, a silver Sharpie right here, and I would take in this case the unmodified adapter, and I'm not going to do this but I'm going to demonstrate it or pantomime it here for you. I would essentially mark and measure four and a half millimeters all the way around on this. And then that gives me my mark to be able to file against. The aluminum on these is very, very soft, so you don't have to exert a tremendous amount of pressure uh, to, to produce the filings you're going to be using as you cut away that material. When you're done and you have it at that 45 millimeter mark and do give yourself a little uh, time to work on that, you'll want to be aware of a couple of things. Number one, you don't want to go down any deeper than 45 millimeters because that lock pin right there, which uh, is what controls the articulation or the movement of that ring, is seated against the front of that adapter. If you cut any deeper than this, you'll begin to cut into its seating, and you do not want to do that. The other thing you want to be careful of is the electronics, which are right down in this area here, and so you want to do all of your filing in an area away from this ring, or put this ring somewhere in another room, so that there's no danger of contamination of the either the gearing down here or shorting of the, of the one circuit board that's primarily there. Once you've cut away that material, it's simply a matter of reassembling it, pushing it back together, it's a pressure fit on that, and then tightening these screws back down, and you're done. That's the, all is required to modify this unit. There's no requirement of any kind of electronic modification of any kind with this. That's what makes it so exciting. Uh, even someone, I think, with a limited or minimal amount of experience uh, doing uh, filing on metal should be able to be comfortable doing this. I've got to warn you once again, though, it does void the warranty, and if you do it wrong, please don't come back and blame me. <laughs> but I will tell you that uh, I've had great success using this, enough so that I actually purchased this one, believe it or not, so that if I were to have destroyed this first adapter, I would have a backup in place. Turns out I didn't need it. And as it turns out, I actually bought three more of them so that I, I can continue to leave these on the lenses because I really like to leave these on the lenses that uh, I'm currently going to be using on a, on a regular basis. So there you have it. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, that's the modifications that have been made. If you have any questions, you want any more detail on this, uh, some additional still photographs added, I can certainly append those later. Please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to include those. But it really is fairly self-explanatory, I believe, in what I've demonstrated here. And I used this ruler, this ancient ruler. And i got to tell you the reason I use this ruler. I love this. Uh, it's really, really old. It actually belonged to my father when he was in elementary school. So this is over probably 75 to 80 years old at this point. And I love the fact that on the back it's Westcott, you know. For those of us in the photographic biz, that's that's a kind of a neat name, although it has no relationship to the current company using that name. Um, but anyway, I use this really fundamentally very small, very simple millimeter marked ruler, uh, which allows me to determine just exactly how much material I was going to remove from that TechArt Pro adapter. So there you have it in a nutshell, guys. That's the modification, which allows me to do some amazing things. I'm going to include some photos here at the end of this. And I want to thank you guys once again for watching, for your attention as always, for the phenomenal responses I got back on the previous videos. 
especially those involving the uh, the TechArt Pro versus the uh, the clone of it. And I want to thank you guys again. If you have any ideas, by the way, that you'd like to have me pursue or any thoughts on, on future videos, please leave those as well because I'm always open to suggestions. I'm excited about doing a lot of cool stuff for you guys coming down the road. There's more of these to come as well. So thanks again for watching. And as always, I'm Jeff Ray, the prototographer for Steeped in Light Photography. And remember, it's not what you take, it's what you make. So remember to make it matter and make it yours. Until next time, guys, great shooting and thanks for watching.